Hi, I am Omkar Hakpande and I would be giving you a brief knowledge about memory stars. In this presentation, we will be covering the listed topics. The first thing is, what is a memory star? Well, the memory star is a time varying non-linear device formed by a sandwich of switching metal oxide interface. It is a combination of two words, namely memory register, since here register saves the data. The symbol shown is that of the memory star. Now let's look at the history of these memory stars for a bit. Traditionally, there are only three independent two terminal passive circuit elements, namely R that is resistor, L that is inductor and C that is capacitor. However, in 1960, Professor Leon Chua established mathematical foundation for nonlinear circuit theory in which there was another independent differential relationship which was d phi is equals to mdq that was mathematically different from the nonlinear resistance that coupled the voltage v to the current i dv is equals to rdi he explored this new nonlinear circuit element and found that it was essentially a resistor with memory now if a memristive system is driven with some type of cyclic excitation such as a sinusoidal current the plot of the voltage versus the current will be a lissajous curve for which the voltage is always equal to zero when the current is zero and vice versa. The memory stuff represents an independent basis function for constructing passive nonlinear circuits. So it has a status similar to the nonlinear resistor, capacitor and inductor and hence is considered as the fourth fundamental elemental circuit element. Since 1996, research groups in HP labs, where HP stands for Havlet Packard, have been doing a lot of work related to this field. Later, they learnt about Professor Chua's work and hence found new dimensions for their work and thus came up with a circuit design for memory stars while designing crossbar switches. For an example, an AFM image of a 21 by 21 memory star crossbar array is shown in the figure 5.1. Memory star works as follows. A memory store effectively stores information because the level of its electrical resistance changes when current is applied. A typical resistor provides a stable level of resistance. By contrast, a, a memory store can have a high level of resistance which can be interpreted as a 1 in data terms and low level can be interpreted as a 0. Thus, data can be recorded and rewritten by controlling current in a sense a memory star is a variable resistor that through its resistance reflects its own history. Now think of a resistor as a pipe through which water flows. The water is electrical charge. Now this memory star is a pipe that changes diameter with the amount and direction of water that flows through it. If water flows through this pipe in one direction it expands that is becoming less resistive but send the water in the opposite direction and the pipe shrinks becoming more resistive. Further, the memory star uh, remembers its diameter when wat water last went through. Turn off the flow and the diameter of the pipe freezes until the water is turned back on. That freezing property suits memory stars brilliantly for computer memory. The ability to indefinitely store resistance values means that a memory star can be used as a non-volatile memory. R. Stanley Williams found an ideal memory star in titanium dioxide. Like silicon, like silicon, titanium dioxide is a semiconductor and in its pure state it is highly resistive. However, it can be doped with other elements to make it very conductive. In TiO2, the dopants don't stay stationary in a high electric field, they tend to drift in the direction of the current. Putting a bias voltage across a thin film of titanium dioxide semiconductor that has dopants only on one side causes them to move into the pure TiO2 on the other side and thus lowers the resistance. Running current in the other direction will then push the dopants back into place increasing the TiO2's resistance. Now this is the architecture based on a non-volatile memory chip. It is designed to connect to 16 rows and 16 columns of a memristor crossbar array. There are 16 output signals read from the chip. Each bit line or column is connected to a single sense amplifier along with a write driver. The word lines or rows are only connected with write drivers. 
there are separate row and column decoders for selecting the desired memory store on the cross crossbar. The bits are written one bit at a time. The reading is done one row line at a time. There are two modes of operation for the chip. The right enable pin selects between read or write mode. The read and write circuits are explained in the upcoming slides. For the read circuit, the first approach is to use voltage divider or a trans impedance amplifier. The voltage divider is the simplest circuit approach for reading memory store crossbar. In order to minimize the current drain in the unselected rows in the crossbar, an amplifier is used to hold the node voltage. The value is selected such that there is zero voltage drop across the unselected rows. The circuit schematic is shown in the figure 9.1. One end of the memory store is grounded while the other end voltage is forced to a reference voltage VREP with the help of the amplifier. The right circuit is based on an inverter switch. The inverter is a current starved inverter for both sinking and sourcing current from a single memory star bit. The limiting resistor R limit is used to vary the current in the current memory current mirror transistors as shown in the figure. The resistor value is adjusted for two different bias currents for the purpose of simulation. Well, as it can be seen from the comparison table that memristors have advantages of flash memories and DRAMs together. For example, memristors have least cheap area, minimum energy per bit, minimum read time, etc. Memristors have other advantages like resistance is easier to measure compared with charge in scaled down E from memory. Switching voltage is lower than for floating gate flash. Then it has a simple structure and a low cost. Memory store architectures have high density with good scalability and memory store systems have high endurance. One highly persuasive area where memory stores can be applied is that of non-volatile random access memory which is NVRAM. The memory store is seen as having significant potential in this area as the device exhibits memory does not require continuous power draw and consumes little physical area. For digital memory applications, one bit of information can be stored using a single memory store. This can be achieved forcing the memory store to its extreme resistance values R on and R off, each state corresponding to either a 1 or a 0. AC signals are utilized so that the stored data is not disturbed. A crossbar arrangement is often used for this memory architecture. Thus, any memory store can be programmed or read by applying a voltage to the necessary horizontal and vertical traces while letting the remaining traces float. Memory store can be used as a associative memory. The fundamental cell is shown in the figure 12.1 in which two memory stores are programmed with complementary values. For the logic 0 state mem x is set to high resistance while the mem y is low resistance and vice versa for the logic 1. For this please refer the figure 12.2. Now the state of the cell can be compared to a logic input 1 setting sy to high voltage and sx to low voltage and vice versa for input 0. The matching is rep represented uh, and it is complemented as low voltage on output out M as shown in the figure 13.1. Now an associative array of 3 by 4 width is illustrated in the figure 14.1 in which the outputs are collected by the MN lines and sent to the line amplifiers. Since in this configuration each matching bit and current on the MN line the total current is converted in a voltage output proportional to the matching bits. Moreover, memory store can possibly allow for no nanoscale low power memory and distributed state storage. Thus, memory store can be used as its extreme resistance values in order to provide digital memory. Now, talking about the limitations of memory stores, 
the first thing is that the non stoichiometric oxide is difficult to control and there is a huge trade off between reset current and reliability when switching from reset state to set state large noise is absorbed it is difficult to make large arrays of these mem resistors and hence this limits its probability of replacing flash and dram memories in near future these are my references and thank you and subscribe for more videos